hungry and we all need a pee, but we can't we can't have them here and not and not talk to them and, and hear them say a little something about the film and and so on. Um, I perhaps should have said that the film is adapted from a, a, a short novel called um, The Month in the Country by J. L. Carr, which won the Guardian Fiction Prize in uh, 1980. Um, a very slender piece, but uh, exquisitely written. Um, and so uh, I'd like to pass the microphone to Kenneth uh, to pick up the story, really, about how the film developed. And then maybe just we'll just pass the mic down back this way, and each of you reflect a little bit on what it's like to, to see the film. Should we get Ken up here, then, as well? Ken well, we also have Ken McMillan, but no more chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, can, can we acknowledge Kenneth McMillan? Where, Kenneth, stand up. <laughs> and while we're acknowledging, Michelle is at the back. Michelle Gish, who cast the film. It's beautiful. Finally, Howard Blake, who wrote the music. Where are you, Howard? Wow. Howard? There he is. Well, I'd be very proud to be associated with that film, if you have to sing it again tonight. Um, and I can't, to my memory's shame, tell you how we originated the idea of making a film of it. Whether that came from Simon, or whether it came from me, or someone else suggested it. But whoever did suggest it is a very, very good idea. Um, and what I have, and forgive me for this, as it were, it's a producer trivia, um, along with a great sense of achievement, as I say, pride in the film, I remember a number of producer kind of trivias. For example, that we had to schedule it so that Ken Branner, who was playing Romeo in the lyric Hammersmith, could get away every evening at about 4.30 and be driven into London. We weren't, I may say, filming in Yorkshire, we were filming in... Um, in, in Oxfordshire, not that far away from London, but that was the strain. And I can remember being told by um, our money man two days after we started shooting that we, I contracted to deliver a film of 104 minutes. If Pat continued to go at the slow pace he was going, we would deliver one of 208. <laughs> <laughs> um, all these things I remember. And I also, as I say this is a bundle of trivia I'm talking to now, um, Pat, I made a number of films with Pat, and I think Pat is probably proudest and fondest of this one, so much so that he chose to marry in the church of the location. I think we could do without that. <laughs> the other thing, I'm just to do it publicly, as someone should, is to congratulate Colin on his award on Sunday and wish him yeah. a good yeah. Pat do the artistic bit. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the artistic bit. And it, it was it just looking at it, uh, it reminded me of one of the happiest times of my very dodgy career. It was a really wonderful time. It rained most of the time. But we tried to make it look a little bit sunnier than it was. But it was a great pleasure to be able to make this type of film. It's the only film I've made in England. I've done post-production. It's the only film I've also done about Englishness. And I'm very, very proud of it. I'm very fond of this country. I'm very attached, connected to it in many, many ways. But the, the, the beauty of the acting and the beauty of Simon's script is, I think, what gives me the greatest pleasure. I think Colin was already a great actor then. You know, now he's got this ball. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, was, he was so perfect uh, in getting that, uh, the nuances and the power and the undercurrents of loss and loneliness and the lost opportunity at the end. Uh, circumstances would not have allowed it to be otherwise. But uh, anyway, I'll hand you over to him. I, I, I remember nothing. <laughs> As usual. It's a shock. These two gentlemen, I mean, this was 20, 24 years, 24 years ago, and uh, they were Adonis's, both of them. <laughs> Perfect specimen. Um, so it's, it's rather like being in a, Please don't take in a, in a horrific scientific experiment. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. That's <laughs> right. Uh, I think I still look like that. Like, I look in the bathroom mirrors when I shriek. Um, it rained. It did rain every day. I mean, we we only had about five weeks, I think, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. And uh, and it was my. I think the abiding memory is uh, of, of Ken McMillan looking at the clouds and saying, I mean, because this film had to be shot as a, a summer idyll. I mean, this these people are unable to reach each other. It's it's all the, the torment post First World War, which affected people who stayed behind and who survived, in, you know, um, in incredibly intense ways. And I think it's it's about this the inability of these people to reach each other, really, whether they're within a marriage or uh, whether it's a friendship, they, no one can. Words are not uh, sufficient uh, for what is really going on with with anybody, and I think Simon Gray um, captured that perfectly. I mean, it, uh, great film writing is so much to do with silence uh, and what isn't said, and, and empty spaces. And Pat was a, a director who, and always has been a director who is quite fearless when it comes to that sort of thing, and it's a gift to an actor. Um, and I've always relished that. I've always relished the, the opportunity to, to make use of stillness and silence. And I think that I've worked with some wonderful directors, but um, surprisingly few of them have the confidence to allow that, in it, to breathe in a film. Um, and Pat really is one of the very few. But I just remember that the pressure we were under, I mean, there's a paradox here, because to allow uh, things to unfold at, at, at a pace which is not hasty and is, is not driving out the, the soul of the piece um, in, under circumstances in which you're panicking most of the time, frankly. I mean, Kenneth Branagh would have to be gone at three o'clock every day so he could be on stage. The kids could only work certain hours because that's the law. Uh, all the scenes I did with the kids when I was standing on the scaffolding, having said I don't remember, it was flooding back. <laughs> um, the scenes I had to do on the scaffolding were all, all had to be, uh, the script girl did all the acting on by the cameras, so the kids weren't even there for any of that. And, it, and with the rain, I mean, it was Ken looking at the sky saying, all right, you, if you turn it, if you roll the camera now, you've got a 45 second take. <laughs> and, and I, most of the film was shot like that. Yeah, that's right. While we were in Buckinghamshire pretending it was Yorkshire, then we did go to Yorkshire for three days mm -hmm. where we actually needed the sunny bits. And then we needed the rain. It was the only bit where we needed the rain, where I arrived, the sun. train uh, arrived and I marched across into the rain. Blazing sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring out the old rain machine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just irony upon irony. <laughs> I just want to say I completely understand the impulse to take photographs. I totally understand the impulse. I ask you to restrain yourselves. <laughs> we, I'm serious, please don't take photographs. We are videoing this for a wonderful website called simongray.org.uk and that's going to be a, a serious resource and a body of, of, of work that will illuminate all of Simon's writings and his collaborations and so forth. So please go to simongray.org.uk but restrain the impulse for now. <laughs> I just wanted to say, because we showed how wonderful, translucent and ethereal Natasha's performance was, mm -hmm. and what a poignant memory of her seeing the film is. Although, to descend again to producers vulgar, it doesn't stop me every time I see the film from really hoping that this time, mm -hmm. Birkin and Mrs. Keats mm -hmm. will get it. Ken has got very strange sexual. <laughs> 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 the, the, anyway, I, I have nothing more to say. Do any of you have any questions? <laughs>